Good morning, everybody. I'm Bart Winkler. Welcome into the Winkler Verse. Great to be back with you on the uh, YouTube live stream. Thanks to Dan Shaney Insurance. We also will put this up on Spotify if you're watching the YouTube and uh, and want to finish it later. Um, I am going to talk about the Packers, some interesting NFL news. I'm going to talk about the Brewers a little bit and just the way that I'm approaching this season. We could talk about the Bucks as well. And then, of course, March Madness uh, with the Marquette Golden Eagles having a nice showing and the Wisconsin Badgers having another very poor showing for the seventh year in a row, not getting out of this weekend. Although they did win. I, I, I think there should be something to that. They did win the uh, COVID championship in 2020, according to an ESPN simulation. So I, I do think that that does carry some weight. If you're going to evaluate Greg Gard and his tenure, you do have to include that they won a fake championship. And to me, it says every... Uh, the, the Badgers, the Badgers conference or the NCAA championship that the Badgers were declared winners of by that ESPN poll that, that matters as much as the Lakers championship in the bubble or the Dodgers championship in a 60 game season. I mean, if those are fake, um, then, then they count, then why can't this one count for the Badgers? So again, if you're going to evaluate Greg guard, you should maybe, uh, evaluate that he is a national champion. Whether it's uh, in just spirit or or in jest, either way, congratulations uh, are in order. Belated, of course, to the Badgers for winning that title. Um, the Badgers, I, I think that you know, I'm not the most qualified man to talk college hoops. I don't really watch it during the season, uh, but I get as into it as anybody else during the playoffs. That Houston Texas A&M game. I, you know, stayed up, was watching every minute of it. And I don't have, you know, them in my bracket. Uh, I think I took UConn. I took Kentucky in one. Oops. I always take Kansas in one every year. Oops. And then I took the Badgers in one. And I took Purdue in one. So I did five. I do them where they're all the same. And then I just change the winners. So it's not like, oh, I have... Fairly Dickinson in two, and but not in the like and I, I, the matchups that I have are pretty consistent. But I'll change the winner because I'm trying to win a pool. I'm trying to trying to win money. So I took a contrarian Badgers in a pool with no Badger people. I took contrarian Purdue because everyone, including me, thought they might get bounced in the first weekend, uh, which which they did not. But that's how I approach things with the bracket. So I, I don't know. I I'm, I'm as dumb as anybody else when it comes to March madness. It's not something that I watched during the regular season that much. Uh, I did get into the big 10 tournament a little bit when I was with my parents, we watched those games a bunch and that was fun to see. And that's, that's like what I'm missing in the regular season with college basketball are those stakes. Uh, I'm missing the, the stakes, the excitement, like something on the line. I think with college basketball, you get to a point where as long as you're maybe a, you know, 18 and 10 team in a power conference, you're going to get in. Badgers typically don't have a problem being that. Neither do the Golden Eagles at this point. Um, so there's not a lot of there's not a lot of stakes that come with every game. I'd probably get into it more if they were a bubble team throughout the season. I would probably get into it more because there's more stakes. I don't want to be that way. Um, I text some people after the Badgers loss and I said, you know, thankfully I didn't get into this team with the highs and lows all season because this would have been the result. And they said, well, you can say that in any sport. And I go, oh yeah, I suck. And that's kind of what's, you know, bothering me with baseball lately is that you can play this 162 game season and then have a short playoff. And it kind of, uh, is a bummer there. So where we're at right now um, with the Badgers, I, I don't know. I think that Gray Guard's a fine coach. I think he's gotten a lot out of uh, maybe maybe he gets more out of his players than other people would. I do think, though, when you look at Marquette and Shaka Smart and there's a culture there, and I know, like, Gray Guard's the silent assassin and Shaka Smart's, like, basically a sixth defender, but is that something that players are more – apt to play for is there a better culture in marquette is there a better 
um, propensity to think you're going to be a winner at Marquette as opposed to Wisconsin. I don't know. There's been a lot of in-state recruits that have bypassed, I guess, both universities. I don't really know why that is as prevalent as it is, but I don't, I don't think you fire Greg guard at this point. Uh, he has been the coach here for nearly a decade though, which is kind of hard to believe. We'll see what the Badgers end up doing. I think uh, there's a lot of shuffling of coaches. They may have already made that move if they were going to, but uh, I don't know. I, I think that when I watched that game on Friday night, the Badgers, I didn't expect them to win. As soon as you saw they were a 5-12, I didn't, I didn't expect them to win. That, that's just that's that's where we've gotten. So I remember, man, I talk about that 2015 team a lot, as a lot of people do. I still think a lot of us were masking the pain and the agony from what had happened with the Packers. And so we found another outlet where we might win a championship. Uh, cause the, you know, the Packers had gone through it with the Seahawks and uh, all that kind of stuff. So then we had the Badgers to latch onto, and that was a really good team. And, you know, they're very exciting games. And since then I, I haven't felt, and, and they got deep. So, you know, obviously that's probably part of it, but I haven't felt that kind of way about the Badgers, uh, since in the playoffs or in the, in the tournament, cause I think you just expect them to kind of lose. Which sucks. Except, of course, in 2020 when they were national champions, well, which they should hang a banner for, uh, because they were deemed as so. They they won the they won the championship. So congratulations to them for that. With Marquette, um, they got NC State. I would think that they beat them. We could have got a Marquette Wisconsin matchup at some point. That would have been very interesting. I think that. That's what I would like to see out of this rivalry is just like stop talking about each other when you're not playing each other. That's what I would like to see out of Marquette and Wisconsin. I, this doesn't need to be Packers Bears. This doesn't need to be Bucks Celtics even. You know, the Celtics lose the other night. Like Celtics fans are always chirping about the Bucks. They always are. But then the Celtics lose a 30 point lead. And then Bucks fans, we were chirping about the Celtics last night. So it is uh like that's different. I think that Marquette and Wisconsin there can be like a well screw you when we're playing you but either don't root for them or don't like care about them. I still think when Marquette fans make fun of Wisconsin in football it's the dumbest thing. It makes no sense. And I'm not saying that Wisconsin fans have to root for Marquette, but I don't know that Wisconsin, if Marquette loses I don't want to see victory laps being done just like I don't want to get victory lapped when the Badgers bow out of this first weekend, seven years in a row, except for of course, when they did win the national championship in 2020. Um, all right. Tyler says, let's look at some comments here. Bart thought you'd love this. Ram called into 97, three last night, hating on the bucks and got fried by the host. He had the nerve to bring up Terry Rozier as someone we should be worried about. Oh, I do miss talking to Ram. I do miss talking to Ram and all of the things that we should worry about. He should worry about his and my Golden State Warriors who are only a half game up of the Rockets for the playing game. That's not good. So I'm glad that Ram's got an outlet again uh, and I'm glad that he's getting respectfully fried by uh, whoever he is calling into. But I do miss him and would love to hoop with him someday uh freedom boner says badgers look like dog shit they did and they did from early on and we all knew that it was going to happen you know what about that game um steven crawl i don't want to just like destroy this man but he looks like his legs aren't attached to his upper body he looks like he's like not connected with himself and I didn't, you know, I, I, I know these guys, I watch a little, but I've talked plenty that I just don't get into the regular season. But I was stunned because I thought he was good. I thought Tyler Wall used to be good. So Stephen Crowell, I was just like, what is happening here? And then I meet another guy who is in the same position as me, like doesn't watch the Badgers that much during the regular season, was watching this game. And the first thing he said was, 
man, 22, what is his deal? And it's like, I know. It's like the one, the one takeaway us casuals had about this game. So I don't know. Still a bummer. Uh, not great to see, but whatever. Derek says, do you think if there was only 16 teams in the tournament, you would watch more college basketball? Maybe games would start to feel bigger, but then I don't, I don't want to change this tournament. So I, I love this tournament. This, this tournament is great. I don't, if it's going to sacrifice this tournament for me to watch more games in the regular season, I don't want that. This tournament is perfect. This tournament is, is great. They squeezed in those first four, remember, but it's still like kind of works. And I thought it was great that the SEC was getting bounced by a bunch of teams. I thought it was great that Kentucky lost to Oakland. Shout out UWM for allowing that to happen. The whole Jack Golke thing never happens. If Milwaukee uh, beats Oakland, nobody knows about this guy. He actually has profited a lot of money thanks to Milwaukee losing. Uh, so shout out Milwaukee for helping Jack Golke become a star. And then uh, Auburn lost too. So Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner, was all like, oh, you know, well, screw these mid-majors. Well, and then they beat a couple of his guys. The tournament's perfect. And we got a couple of, like, fun runs. Okay, Yale won and Oakland won. And then there wasn't a lot of that chaos on Saturday and Sunday. But now you're getting set up for some really good matchups coming up this weekend where there's only one seed in double digits. Um, you're going to have, what are the games off the top of my head? Uh, North Carolina and Alabama. Go at it. Should be a good one. Uh, Purdue's got a tough matchup against who the hell remembers. But these, I know they're gonna. I know they're gonna be good matchups. I do know that. Uh, you got a rematch, UConn and San Diego State from a year ago. I think uh, oh, Purdue's got Gonzaga, who's been in it sixteen times, or, or the Sweet Sixteen nine times in a row. Duke and Houston should be good. So, I am excited for those games. Uh, Cone Roller, you fighting some internet problems? What's up? Cone. You're muted, Cone. Oh, boy. Cone, Cone's trying to get Cone in here, uh, and he's having some problems. Maybe it's me. I do have a new laptop. This is off the work laptop. I hope the internet's a little better. I see there might be a hiccup or two, but I'm working on that also. I decided after two years of doing this to finally upgrade my... Uh, my system, although it is a big, again, it's, it's taken up a lot of space in that brain because my basement is, uh, well, you've seen a lot of it over the last couple of, uh, weeks. Good to be back though. Thanks to our friends at happy place hemp for making vacation even better. Happy place hemp with those gummies, the CBD, the CBN ones have been helping me sleep on some of those late nights. Obviously they've got the Delta eights and Delta nines. And then if you're just looking for like pain relief. There's been a lot of people who have taken that, um, whether it's the oil, you know, rub it in your, your wrists, people dealing with those issues. If you just got like back pain and, and leg joints and, 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 and problems there, I think we're going to try to get uh, grandma into this. So that's a big family development. Um, we'll have to do that pretty soon, but happy place hemp promo code is BART. 25% off each and every order at happyplacehemp.com. That is still continuing. They've been with the show since the beginning, and uh, a lot of people have been taking advantage of the gummies, and it is really appreciative, or even the other products that they have there. But with the promo code BART, you get 25% off every time. Again, it's an easy thing to get into. You can get the sampler packs, try what you like, play around with it a little bit. The seltzers have been very popular, teaming up with 1840 Brewing. So check it all out. That's available. Happyplacehemp.com. Promo code is BART. What's going on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Ah, perfect. Okay. I had to switch to my iPad. Phone wasn't working. Ay, ay, ay. Well, just talking some badgers, so I'm glad that you're here. Yeah, you kind of pulled the Chuck Freeman getting out of town when the, the biggest time of the year for college basketball starts. I did I didn't plan that. But I also wasn't upset about it. No, it was good. Good first weekend. Um, tough, tough loss for the Badgers. I don't think uh, we fired Greg Gard, but you know maybe his butt's on the hot seat entering next year. 
what why why can't I mean they did win the title in 2020, of course. Of course, of course. But what what like even coming into that game, Cohen, I was just thinking they're not gonna I mean you knew they were gonna lose. Mm, I was pretty confident going into that game, and then within the first five minutes, it's like, oh shit, they're they're cooked. They're cooked. It's like they showed up and were they not expecting James Madison to be trying to win the game? Like they just, they played so shitty. were so unprepared, just could not match JMU's physicality and energy. And that's disgusting. Disgusting. I'm, I was embarrassed to be a, a, a Badger. How do you think they would have done it against Duke? I mean, look at Duke JMU. They destroyed JMU. I, I, I think we probably would have lost. But you never well, know. I did, like I did, I watched the Big Ten tournament uh, a good amount, and I thought, I mean, obviously they look great against Purdue. They were up what ten against Illinois, and I thought, whoa! But then they blew that. And again, I, I don't know. Like with great guard, there's so many things. There's so many things to being a college coach now that you can't just be like, oh, you lost in round one, you're fired because. You got it. It's it's about the recruiting. How is he recruiting? How is he recruiting in his state, in his backyard? Uh, then you look at what your rivals are doing and what what's going on there. You look at your regular season success, but you got to get it done in the playoffs at some point. And then you also got to you know massage the emotions of your own players. That if they don't play, they transfer out uh, two minutes after the tournament's done. Yep. The, the era of earning your playing time and earning your stripes, that's that's over in college basketball. And it, that just doesn't fit with the Badgers, you know, mentality. Because I like like a lot of these mid-major teams, as soon as they get in the tournament, their coach is gone. Even Drake, they didn't win a game and their coach was gone. So if the coaches have that freedom, I don't mind the players having that freedom, but also... What, what are you going to do? Like Doug Edert, remember him from St. Peter? Mm-hmm. This guy transfers last year, ends up, I don't even know where he went, but he played less than he did the year before. It's like, I don't know. that I thought, I thought college basketball in this NIL era, I thought you'd see a lot more like Kentucky Oakland's where the kids that come in, the one and dones, they're going to lose because they're 19, 20. Calipari's right about that. They're going to lose to these teams. That are 23, 24, but eventually, you know, Oakland, you know, talent runs out, I guess, and, and talent wins the day. But I thought you'd see more programs be like, all right, all these guys are doing this. If we can be consistent with our old farts, you know, maybe we can make a run. I guess that's not the case. I think Kentucky's an interesting, you know, discussion because, you know, obviously they pride themselves in, you know, getting these guys to the NBA. They, you know, that's what Calipari is like so focused on and so prideful in, but that doesn't necessarily lead to tournament success, which is, you know, that's what you're there for in college basketball. You're not running a college basketball program just to get guys into the NBA. So I don't know. I think Kentucky's got a tough decision to make here with Calipari. Well, they're going to own 33 if they fire him. True. And I think they, I think there would be Kentucky boosters and people that would be willing to pay that. They freaking hate Calipari. <laughs> Derek After Dark says hashtag Fire Guard. Casual. Uh, a different Derek has, says Connor Asijin got betrayed by Greg Guard. When did Connor Asijin become Michael Jordan? I mean, he he's a role player at that. Like he's going to Michigan. Oh, boo hoo! Have fun in Michigan, buddy. That's where he's going. I mean, that's a, that's a rumor right now, yeah. Do you have boots on the ground on that rumor or no? No, it's actually a legit rumor. Oh, wow. Yeah, Michigan's interested. Jesus. Tony in Texas is here as well. Um, I saw you guys hanging out online last night. I wanted to join, but obviously it was working. Yeah, so I know Cohen's got his panties in a wad over this whole Wisconsin situation. Can you say that in 2024, Tony? I, I don't know. But don't bring that up in front of Chuck Freeman and Q. Cone roller. I, I just don't, I don't understand. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That There's some, yeah, that, there's some craziness going on with those two. But Cone, in all seriousness, this great guard love, I don't get it. Where You got a guy like the guy from Iowa State who's getting all these recruits. He just got one from Oshkosh North. Why not go and get this guy that's getting all these high high-end recruits? Great guard's not getting high recruits. 
Gus Bus, free tags coming in next year. They got I mean, he's been recruiting fine. I don't think that's necessarily their issue. And it's so it's so easy for the Tom Oates of the world to, you know, tweet about, oh, this guy was from Wisconsin that nobody ever heard about. Look what he's doing now. It's like, well, where were you four years ago when the guy was getting recruited? Uh, Joe comes in with some breaking news. AJ Store just declared for the draft. Yeah, I forgot who mentioned it, but people were saying that he's going to be doing like the Nigel. It might have been Zach Heilprin. Yeah, Nigel keeping Hill. his eligibility, but. Yeah, don't hire an agent. Yeah, don't hire an agent. All right, breaking news on the show. Good. Uh, Cone, your audio is getting a little choppy. Are you good or no? Is it any better? No. Drop. All right. Well, I want to bust your balls over the Badgers. I mean, Marquette's in the Sweet 16. No one's talking about it. They got, they got a cakewalk of a schedule. Cone, I'm going to come to Phoenix and be in the Final Four wearing my Marquette Golden Eagle gear. Why? Dude. And you'd be doing the same thing if it was the Wisconsin Badgers, just with wearing red instead. Hey, so I play both sides, red, blue, whatever. I'm in the middle. Are you a front runner, Tony? No, but what I'm – hey. Oh, you totally are, Tony. No, You're I'm not. Hey, I grew up going to Marquette games, went to Catholic school, and, you know, my dad went to UW. So I play – I cheer for both. Um, I'm not – so in the first game, I thought Marquette, they were down like 13 and a half. And so I thought it'd be funny if they lost, which is contradictory to what I was saying before about not worrying about that. But then last game, I was kind of rooting for him. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't want him to like, I don't know. I don't, I, I, like if Marquette wins, that's good. But I don't want Marquette fans to enjoy it. <laughs> that that makes sense. I don't. I don't want. Like if you if you if you root for Marquette, that's fine. But if you're a fan of Marquette, I inherently think there's like something wrong with you. <laughs> I, that's Milwaukee's big university. I don't get it. No, it's not Panther Town. Well, of course, for as far as enrollment, sure, but. I mean, Marquette, all the way back to the Al McGuire, Al McGuire era, it's been a, pretty much a, a powerhouse in basketball for 40-some years. Do you think if Bart Lundy would have gotten the tournament, he would have been taking one of these other jobs? I think absolutely. Oh, for sure. <laughs> he would, have, he, would they have beat Kentucky? No. 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 They only did because Golke's mania. Yeah, I thought Oakland, I thought Oakland was going to get destroyed, and I thought Yale was going to get destroyed because I watched for some reason I was watching Yale Brown on uh, last Sunday. But those are the two I was wrong on. Get a Golki on the show. I probably could. Jr. talked with him for like an hour. Radcliffe. Oh, yeah. Not sports brief. No, nope, not sports brief. All right, Cone. I'm going to cut you with that. This is just a little rattly. Tony, you're good. Yeah. Hey, Bart. So, you know, I want to talk about the Bucks for a little bit. Is that okay? Yeah. Let me also do a couple of things real quick. Uh, shout out to Ryan. He uh, says, guard hasn't reached the second weekend since 2017. It's insane to expect something different, but getting the same result. And then uh, Q, fresh off his Twitter war with Chuck Freeman, uh, <laughs> has joined the show. What's that all about? As well. What's going on with you, Q? I think I'm pretty consistent. So, I, what I'm, was the fight about? What was that? What are you guys arguing about? Oh, um, Chuck made a post about Caitlin Clark swearing on the court yesterday. And, like, I've listened to Chuck for 15 years. I've never heard him complain about any male athlete um, complaining about about what they're saying on or off the, the court or field. So I just said, are you going to start calling out male athletes when they swear on the court? What I will say what I will say, and I guess this will be in defense of Chuck is he's always been um, when people like laugh or have fun or smile when they're losing. Oh, he, uh, he would always get mad about that. So um, and I'd be like, it doesn't matter, man. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. I don't like it. So I, I, I 
just need to lower my expectations with him. So it's it's all right. Well, Tony wanted to talk Bucks. Uh, we can pivot to Bucks. Matt says I thought Tim Shea was going to be here today. Uh, Tim did promote that he was going to be here, and uh, <laughs> I sent him the link at one o'clock. And I will. I expect to hear from him at four thirty that he just woke <laughs> up from a nap. So, yeah, I was really eager for the shakeaways. Maybe we still get them. Maybe not. But um, Q, good to see you, Tony. What did you want to say about the Bucks? Well. My favorite thing about the shakeaways is when you ask Tim for three shakeaways he, and he can only come up with two. That's that's always classic. If that, but a couple of things. So Q, I've been seeing a, huh? If that, what's that part? Oh, is that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Hey yeah, yeah. Q, so I've been, I've been seeing a lot of Drew Holiday uh, stuff out there in the media today. You know about not getting enough time or warning about being traded. What's your take on Drew? With that whole, I didn't get enough notification. I mean, you get traded, you get traded. You know, what, yeah. where's the complaining? I don't, I don't know. I guess he's just answering the question that Draymond brought to him. So I, it doesn't seem like there's much bad blood between him and the players. But um, at this point, I just want it to be the Eastern Conference Finals. Talk is cheap. Let's let's roll the ball out and see what happens. I have the utmost confidence in this team in a given seven game series against anyone in the East. Well, I mean, to your point, they did, you know, look okay against the Celtics. They had a nice little fourth quarter comeback without Giannis. Uh, I mean, my concern right now is you live and die with Damian Lillard's three point shooting cue. If they're playing high end defense, then yeah, they're going to be in every game, but to rely on Lillard. But the Celtics, rely, they rely on the three-point shooting. And well, then they when he went away from them last night, the Hawks came back from 30 down. Tony, right. did you watch Sunday's game against the top team in the West? Because Dame yeah, had so a shit game and we won. That was a great game. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Chuck. I swore. My bad. I didn't. Sorry, yeah, Chuck. I did. I did. And they shut down Shea Gilgris, of course. It was a great game, but... They're not going to see the Thunder. They have to beat Tatum. They got to beat Brown. They got a bunch of guys that can shoot the ball. You know, if the Bucks, who who else can really shoot a lot? You know, really well at a high level. You got Chris. You got maybe AJ Green. You know, who else can really shoot? I mean, it really helps when your top scorer is like eighty efficient on most games. Like Giannis just doesn't miss. So. Well, are you? thinking if they don't make the finals this team's a bust um i i guess no because last year they got hurt like every, every like you forget that Giannis missed two and a half games against the heat last year so like and they lost I, when he played but and he this, played hurt i like i don't know i don't i don't need so to be the bucks though. defender so here, here's what i'll say where I can somewhat agree with you unless like there's a major injury and we don't make it to the Eastern conference finals. I think that the team will make major changes to the roster and um, like, maybe you're right. Maybe Giannis will force his way out. I don't think he will. I, there, think I don't, I don't, think I think he's loyal, but t Tony's on record saying that. And there's people in the media, like uh, Colin Cowherd's been saying that for a couple months now. Um, know. yeah, I know he's oblivious. Um, but I, I, I think that if, if we're healthy and we lose to the Celtics in the Eastern conference finals, I would be surprised if Chris and Brooke are both here next year. So I think but, Brooke would probably get jettisoned out before Chris. It, I think it depends on what you can get. Yeah. I think that, um, they, with this group, with Damon Giannis, you need a finals. You need to win within the next two years. Absolutely. And if they don't win this year, it will depend. I think Q, you're on track. It will depend, like, whether they go to Boston and lose in game six or seven. All right. Well, then we're, you know, let's just get one more year to tinker. Um, or if they lose to, like, the Cavs or the Knicks, well, then there's going to be some <laughs> problems because this team absolutely should be in the Eastern Conference Finals. It should be against the Celtics. And that is a series that's probably going to go seven games regardless. And it's going to be in Boston. So that's that's what I'm expecting. 
Uh, I think that the Celtics have the best chance they've had in the last 10 years to win. I also don't trust them. I, I, I think I think the game that we saw last night, while it is just a regular season game, I think that they are prone to when they get kind of when they get off there because they're they, I mean the, these threes that they make it's just unbelievable the barrage and this has been happening since Al Horford became a three point assassin against us six years ago but when they get off track a little bit and I still don't see a lot of games where Brown and Tatum both step up and I I think that I think that playoff Drew is not going to score baskets so you can't depend on that. I, I, I mean, Porzingis is a problem. I think the way they use him is a problem. Derek White being like the fifth shooter is a problem. So they, they they're like they are a good team and they'll be favored and they probably should be favored, but by no by no um, by no means should the Bucks not be given a really good chance to beat them. I've got a question for the group. Would you be more surprised if? The Celtics or the Bucks miss the Eastern Conference Finals this year. So, I would uh, the Celtics. I think I'd be more surprised if the Bucks don't make it. I just feel like the Celtics haven't done anything under pressure this year, and they haven't faced much. Like this latest Drew injuries, it's small, but they just have had good injury luck all year, and I question how long that'll stay to get together. So. I don't know. We'll see. Hey, I got a couple of points for you boys before I drop. All right. You mentioned Drew Holiday, Bart. I, I could make a case to def, uh, for a Bucks defense that I'll take playoff Pat Beverly over playoff Drew Holiday. Do you agree? Uh, well, we'll see. But I am excited to watch though. playoff Pat. Yeah. It's a conversation, though. It's it's not as like one-sided as you think. So to your well, point, Drew Holiday – I mean, Drew Holiday. I don't want to. I don't want to slander him. He no, won us not. the title. Purely matchups. Purely but matchups. By, but he got the nickname Drew Bledsoe oh, <laughs> in the playoffs because <laughs> because uh, because uh, of the shooting. That, I, that's... I I mean I uh, the, the Pat Bev. You know, I th- I think Pat Bev is a major part of this team. Okay, so a great move by Horst. All right. Cute to your okay. Now I'm gonna go pro bucks here. We got Pat Bev. The Bucks are the two seed. They've been under the radar all year. Tons of pressure on the Celtics. Kind of reminds me of your Warriors back when they lost to LeBron, setting all these records. The Bucks don't have as much pressure. I think there's a ton of pressure on Tatum, a ton of pressure on Brown. These are very highly paid guys. They haven't gotten over the mountaintop yet. Uh, I I could see that the Bucks could get get through this, but it's not going to be easy. So, I mean, if they don't make it through this, you know, to the finals, I'm not going to be disappointed. But I just want to go out there swinging, man. Go out there swinging, give it all you got. And I think they, they can. I think they can do it, but it's not going to be easy. Well, I think it, I think it's going to depend on, like, how does it go down? Right. I mean, are you just missing shots or are you just getting your ass kicked mentally and physically? And I, I don't think that'll happen to the Bucks. And Q, I was on board with this Doc Rivers hire in the middle of the year, and I know you were pro Adrian Griffin and all that, and I'm not going to hold that against you. But I think Doc has really steadied the ship, and he's a really a professional coach that that took a lot of shit when I don't think he deserves all that shit. I mean, he had Chris Paul, James Harden. These guys are notorious chokers. He's now with a professional group that I think can get him another title, potentially. And I think he's done a hell, hell of a job this year, man, especially at the defense. That defense is top end. Yeah, I think as pro Griff as I was, I was immediately excited about the Doc Rivers hire. Um, before we even signed the contract, I was saying he would have the best resume of any Bucks coach, like when they were hired. Um, and he's done nothing but surprise to the upside, um, especially since the All Star break. I think it takes a special coach to be able to motivate a guy like Damian Lillard. And the stunt that he pulled against Boston where he pulled Dame for Pat Bev, like on a defensive possession, really got under Dame's skin. And um, the next game he had those two crazy steals to seal the game for us. And I I pin that. That's a badge of honor for Doc. Um, And I, I think that, 
as much of anybody on this team, I think Doc Rivers has the most to gain from a successful offseason for the Bucks. I think everyone else kind of might get a little bit of a free pass. Um, but I, I think Doc's got a, a lot to prove, especially like if he can like turn the ship around and, and take them to the finals or win it this year. He'll be legendary, not just in the city, yeah, but cute. in coaching He'll, he'll be up there with the uh, Chuck Daly's, the Rudy Tom Janovich's. I'm not saying it's a Pat Riley or any of these guys, but he's going to be that next tier of coach that won multiple titles, although with different teams. What he could accomplish this year, I, I who is the last coach that has done that middle of the year, come come through? Was it the Lakers maybe back in the day? I, I don't even know the last coach that has done that. Um, well, Ty Lue. Oh, Ty, okay, Ty Lue, yeah, David Blatt, absolutely. I, Thank you. I saw somebody said they didn't want to play the Heat or the Pacers. I want both of them. Bring them on. Yeah. I, the, the Tyree, one, I, I, Tyrese Halliburton had his superstar audition, and he he failed. He did not, he did not uh, get the role. And was, the uh, Heat aren't who they were last year. Um, and many people forget that we swept them in 2021. People we do forget. Final. So. Uh, breaking sports news. This is from Cone. He says Aaron Rodgers is not a VP candidate. Uh, RFK Jr. did not go with Aaron Rodgers. But the Green Bay Packers could potentially move from Green Bay. No, they that can't. One? That's not true. They're going to be playing in the Chicago suburbs, probably. No, they're not. All right. Well, it'd be a closer drive for you and me. The city of Green Bay is being stupid about the Packers for some reason. So you're saying it's a possibility. There's a chance. No, 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 no. I, I, I didn't pay $300 in stock for them to possibly move. Yeah. But if they did move here, like... <laughs> yeah. Move the gurney. Honestly, like... Move the team to Gurney. <laughs> there's a bunch of cranky green fans from Green Bay. Like You get a lot of people... That season ticket list, I mean... That might be, <laughs> be the best. if you could get them out of Green Bay. That means all those people that live there that hate going to the games, but they do it because you know they're grandpappy. Yeah. Well, most of the fan, most of the fan base is not from the state. There, it's a worldwide fan base. And I saw Dion is talking about holding out his kid or holding out some of his players that trying to do a Eli Manning. So I mean, Green Bay. Where can we put? Where can we slap Lambeau Field down? Just put it. Uh... Put it like, uh, where where could we? Summerfest in a probably. neighborhood. I mean, they built this the the sledding hill, so we can just rebuild it somewhere. Yeah. Else. Plop it, plop it right on the east side, right right by me. Yeah, in Shorewood. <laughs> right in Shorewood. <laughs> you would want that traffic. Put it put it right where Shorewood High School is. Just that again, right you can make money. Yeah, I can, we already got a field right there. Put it on top of the Greyhound field. Yeah. Turn that oh, Winkler. Yeah. House into a party house, rent it out. Oh, for sure. That'd be awesome. 100 bucks for parking. Oh, you people with tailgating the Culver's right there. Yeah. The corner bakery. Oh, man. That'd be great. Bart, how's yeah. your bracket looking? Who did you have in your final? Bad. Uh, it wasn't good. I, I don't know. I, it wasn't good. No. I had Kentucky in the final four and many of them. I just, I fill out one, but I changed the winners. Depending on, so I, I I had I always take Kansas to go far. Even though they lost their guard, I thought you know I just always take Kansas. Uh, Badgers I thought would go a little farther because I'm an idiot. I didn't take Marquette that far. I think I took him here, but it's bad. I'm not gonna win any money. And then I did a survivor pool, which I'm more upset about because I had uh, Auburn. Mm. Hey Bart, how do you feel about that NBA guy betting on himself in prop bets? No, he he was sandbagging games. Oh, he was. It's the other yeah. way around. Yes. I mean, so he I, would I, bet. There were two instances where he the over unders for him are seven and a half rebound or points, four and a half rebounds, and like a half of a three pointer. And there's two games where he played in the game. Left early, one was an eye injury and the other was an illness. Like he pulled himself, yeah. Yeah, and in those two games, the next night, the highest amount of betting that was done was on his props being under. Wow. It's Michael Porter Jr.'s brother, Jonte Porter the Raptors, 
which it's funny because there's like, this is like evidence or at least very, wow. It's like, okay, this something happened here. And then yet all people care about is like, did Shohei do it? When <laughs> someone else actually did it, and we're like, ah, oh, fuck him. We don't care. About that. <laughs> did Shohei do it? So yeah, yeah, gambling in sports, like it's, it's too much. Um, but this is what we did. This is where we're at. Yet Pete the- Rose cannot get in the Hall of Fame. I, I just don't get the hypo- hypocrisy there. Which is that was. I'm glad that you can bet on sports. I'm glad that you can bet on sports, and I'm glad that you can. I'm glad that you can do that in most pl- places. You know, we have to go to the casino, but we can still play DraftKings, all that kind of stuff. I'm glad you can do that. But the way that sports have basically, like, it's the like this, like the only thing they give a shit about. That's a problem. And I think, you know, I see these reports or read these stories about how young kids, I mean, are 18, 19, all these college kids are like just blowing their fucking load on uh, on gambling. MC says, why can't athletes let us have our own thing? Well, what we got to do is we got to know one of these athletes. We got to know one of these athletes and get him to take a dive. Well, because I think that's what it sounds like it had like he told somebody or like, I don't know, maybe it's the mob connection, but they said that the, the nights that he sandbagged, there were like way more, way more bets on him. And that was like thousand dollar bets. It was the highest winner of the night. Yeah. And that was the, the most bets, like the winningest bet for DraftKings of the night, like both times. Yeah. So, but there's a report that there's other players that they have concerned about that. Oh. Like, the league is trying to not any let any of that information leak. So, which um, let's just hope none of the bucks are involved. Yes, I well, will pray. I will pray on that tonight, Q. Damian Lillard's had some bad shooting games. Yeah, that's well. When I yeah, when I read that, <laughs> no, come on, you guys, come on. Know. That, you know, I'm not. Like, I'm kind of a worst case scenario type thinker, and I was like, "Fuck, uh, that would that would make some of Dame's like random shit games very explainable." Well, I mean, he's got a pending divorce, got to play pay for attorneys. I mean, it makes yeah, sense. you guys are you guys are ridiculous. That's very good. I, cute. Yeah, this is, I it's not true. Just where my brain talk, talk about talk about thinking worst case scenario. That's how my brain works. Jesus. So. Uh, Alex, uh, lucky man, he finds out over the weekend Pat Bev does his podcast at his apartment complex. In in Chi Town? I don't know. I think he records it in Chicago. That's Doesn't he? Cool. Didn't he? Um, he bought Coach Bud's house. He was renting it from him. Yeah. Or didn't or he buy Coach Bud's house? Yeah. I think he's just renting it. Tyler says, two days away from opening day, and Bart buries the lead. He sure hates baseball. Smiley emoji. We are going to do an opening day watch party. I mean, what do you want to talk about? The Garrett Mitchell injury? The Devin Williams injury? What do we want to talk about? I can't get too worked up over, is it is it Eric Haas or uh, Sal Freelich? Who they <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Pat Murphy going to play more small ball? What are we going to do here? Oh, uh, okay. To to Cameron says you're not going. I don't know if I'm going to Brewers opening day, but that is the home opener opening. Day. And I, you know, I know that there's a weird thing around that language. And I say opening day, I mean opening day of the season, which is scheduled to be Thursday. I think it's supposed to rain in New York. Is that still? Is that still what we're looking at? I'll, I'm going to check Apple weather. I know that. Everybody hates the Apple weather app, but in New York. You open against the Mets, right? Yeah, Thursday, it's supposed to rain in the morning. It might clear up by the afternoon, so we may get we may get baseball on Thursday. Either way, uh, for the opening day, road opener, I'll just be on YouTube if people want to come in and join. I don't know that I'll post it as a podcast. I don't know that it will be anything like – interesting to listen to but I'll I'll be here watching the game. I'm going to I'm going to try to become the next I'm going to try to become the Brewers version of Tom Grassi is what I'm going to try to do. Nice. So, I'm excited for that. I got tickets. If it's Friday, I'll still do it Friday uh, as well. 
I got tickets to the second home game. I don't like that it's at three. I would have gone if it was at. No, the the second home game is at noon. When what day is that? Wednesday. I think we open on a Tuesday. We open on the second, and the second game is on the third or Wednesday. Bart, you should text Chuck to come on right now to confront Q. I talked to Chuck about coming on uh, this week, but I don't. That- I don't want to. I don't. Right I don't, now, text them. I don't know. want to get involved with this. I, I've chat. got no, no ill. Hey, he's fine. What, he's did you guys hear about man. this hit piece they're doing on uh, the Washington Post? Is doing on on that LSU women's coach though. I, I, do, yeah, she sucks. That, I hate her. I, I don't. That's what's the one that on? wears the crazy jackets. Yeah, yeah. It, the women's basketball is more interesting than the men's now. Well, it's because there's more stars. More stars, more stories, more drama, and like. I was saying this last night. If any of these teams in the men's bracket lose this weekend, but if like Caitlin Clark loses, it's like whoa. You know what's crazy? If LSU loses, it's like whoa. There, I'm pretty sure that like the average WNBA contract is like three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and even be lower. Yeah. So like these players are definitely going to stay like four or five years. Like if they're getting NIL money in, um, like the NCAA two A, they're gonna get more than that in college. Well, Clark's leaving, but she she's got her, she'll get a lot of it. The, the the endorsements will carry over. But still, I I mean, I think she probably stayed an extra year because she's gonna be making more. She was making more money in Iowa than she will in the WNBA, at least salary wise. Maybe I'll have to ask her. <laughs> she's coming on my show tonight. I'll ask her. Just kidding. Nice. Just kidding. Uh, I don't get guessed. All right. Uh, I'm going to let you guys go. Good to talk to you both. Did you, did you talk about Florida, your trip? What do you want to know about it? Like, what? how was your trip? Was the weather good? It was fine. Did you go to the Disney or anything? No. you see any gators? I saw a baby gator. Really? Did you touch it? That's good. Those things will give you sound. I was with my parents for a couple days. Did a lot of swimming at their house. Uh, kid got an ear infection. Oh, no. We went to the villages. Oh, nice. Did you go to Tin City? No. Hmm. I went to a world of beer. Oh, nice. I haven't been to one of those in a long time. Ah, went to that. Oh, I'm I'm uh back. The kid went on a boat. Is his first time ever on a boat? That's pretty cool. I just, uh I made a life choice. I'm back to drinking again. So it's a nice <laughs> year and a half. So what happened? I just uh, I don't know. I just felt <laughs> like drinking again. But playoffs are coming up. Gotta do you have to do you have to turn in your chip? No, I mean I I wasn't in AA or anything. I just um. I don't know. It I it did what it needed to do for me, so it's done so, now. Pro Adrian Griffin, you were sober. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Want to make Griff sure. drove me to drinking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> LeBron tonight. No LeBron tonight for the Bucks game. That's a disgrace. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Anyway, all right, Bart. Good talking. Good Thanks, chatting. Bart. Glad you had a nice trip. Welcome back. All right. Good to be back. Thank you, boys. Q and Tony. Just wrap things up here with some NFL notes. Uh, Packers may play in Brazil. I can get to that 48 minutes in since it leads the headline on the show. Uh, It's a Friday night. It is the first weekend of the NFL. The game's going to be on Peacock. The Eagles are playing either the Browns or the Packers. That was offered by Mark Murphy, who then said one of the problems is the travel and competitive advantage I think the Packers are trying to argue behind the scenes, like, we'll go to Brazil. We would totally go, but we have to bust to Milwaukee first to get to an international airport. So I think they're trying to get out of it. Um, but Cleveland, I don't know that. Yeah, they're international. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's the Packers. Their team colors match up with the Brazilian flag. So there could be a. The Packers have a lot of fans in Brazil. I don't know why I know that. I don't even know if that's true, but I think we all assume that they do, or we were told that they do. 
right now I'm going to play under the assumption that the Packers are going to open the season in Brazil. It'll be a Friday. It won't be the worst thing in the world. It'll be weird. Games on Peacock. It would be picked up locally in Green Bay and Milwaukee, so we can all calm down. Um, but uh, I'd have to work during that. I'm not going to take off for a Packer game. That's dumb. Um, but it could be earlier in the day. I, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. The NFL is going to play two games on Christmas Day. Big surprise. Yes, it is a big surprise because it's a Wednesday. All this stuff about player safety, and at the end of the year, we're going to sneak in a Wednesday. Cameron says 12.5% uh, percent of Brazil NFL fans are Packer fans. Yeah, I see that too, but like, I don't, I don't know where. I don't. Did they do a poll? Was it an online poll? I, I've seen that too, and that's what I'm referencing. But I don't, I, I, I don't, is that real? Is that made up? Did people just, was it a survey? I don't, I don't know. I just, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, no. So that is something the kickoff is changing, which it's gimmicky. I wish these sports weren't so gimmicky. To me, I equate it to what baseball does in extra innings where you have a an automatic runner on second. It's gimmicky. It's gimmicky. It's going to maybe make kick returns better, which I want the kick return playback in the game. So if it does that, that's good. But it takes away the surprise on side. I think you can just move the kickoff. The problem is the, the kickoff at like the 35, of course, are going to get it into the end zone. Make them kick off back at like the 15. Then you'll get returns. But no, we have to move everybody in this little small area. I'm always willing to see it. I'm always, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of these times these rule changes and I was thinking, oh, this is so dumb. And then I end up enjoying it or liking it. So we'll see what happens there. The hip drop tackle, I think that's dumb. They just like... Player safety. They use player safety when it's convenient. Hip drop tackle. Player safety. And we're going to send people to Brazil and play on a Wednesday. On Christmas. No mention of player safety. Ten minute overtimes. Player safety. What? Well, that makes no sense. Vincent. What's up? Late like always. You called uh, Sparky's postgame show. Look at you. I got a voicemail from Austin. This is like two weeks old, but I'm going to play it. I think it still works. Uh, good to talk to Austin on the show last night. Carl's Place voicemail, 402-915-BART, 402-915-2278, carlofet.com backslash BART. They didn't ban the hip tackle right. Uh, we'll find out in the season, Vincent. They banned, they banned the swivel hip tackle but not the hip drop tackle. It's going to be very confusing. No one will know, especially the referees. It's going to be a real shit show. Here's uh, Austin. Hey, Bart. Uh, this is Austin, Milwaukee. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little Aaron Jones and get my feelings out in a way that I could ramble a little bit about it and not do this on a national perspective. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, Hot Take Jake, if you're listening uh, my tweet meant no harm, buddy. Uh, sorry. But um, I do think that his Middleton take about trading him, it, it's starting to make sense to me. Uh, I think I lost some of my pro, pay, uh, pro player mentality. And it's, you know, it's all about the team now. Uh, once, I think it was once Hater was traded and I boycotted the rest of that season. Obviously, like ownership didn't give a shit. So why should I? Um, these these deals haven't really bothered me. You know, Rogers going to the Jets, Burns leaving, Jones leaving, whatever it is. It, it just who cares, man? It's all about the team. And you know, and if Jones wants to go to Minnesota to play with them, you know, God bless him. What what is Minnesota gonna do? We they're going to have Sam Darnold and Aaron Jones. Good fucking luck, man. I know Justin Jefferson's a stud, but whatever. Um, 
but uh, honestly, with our with our Wisconsin teams, man, we got too much to, like to be positive about that. We need to find something to bitch about. Like, uh, it's it's just it's 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 nothing to be worked up about, man. It, I don't think it matters anymore. Our organizations are good, and you know, keep a positive link reverse. Let's fucking go. Let's see what we can do. All right, love you all. Bye. There we go. And also, Jordan Love is going to get a shitload of money. Brazil, first I've heard, it's either going to be the Packers or the Browns. I think some Brazilian media are saying the Packers are the favorites. That'll be the Friday night of the opening weekend. Uh, with all due to the Browns, I think that the Packers would be more of a draw. But it's going to be an NFL game in Brazil. It's not like people aren't. Oh, who's going? The NFL's in Brazil. Oh, wow. Who's going? The Browns. Ah, oh, fuck it. Next time. No, they're gonna they're gonna go. <laughs> the, the stadium will be packed. Either way. Shout out to Carl's Place. Shout out to Dan Shaney. Shout out to Happy Place Hemp. Again, promo code Bart. Twenty five percent off each and every order. I'll have an mm -hmm, mm -hmm with the boys posted probably around four o'clock, five o'clock on Wednesday during the Brewers opener whenever it is thursday or friday i'll just sit on youtube here and, and hang if people want to do that and uh obviously catch me on the national show on cbs sports radio 9 p.m central till 1 a.m central time catch it on the odyssey app talked a lot of otani last night if you want to grab that uh, those are all podcasted as well on the odyssey app also spotify uh other places I think uh, this podcast is on Odyssey, too. That would make sense. Um, I think it is. I'm, you know what? I'm going to live. I'm going to live check that. Odyssey into the Winkler verse. There it is. Right on Odyssey. How about that? One-stop shop. What an app. Love it. All right. We will talk soon. Great to be back. Great to hear from you guys. Good to talk to you, as always. Thanks for coming into the Winklerverse. We'll talk soon.